Usually, late July and early August are the hottest and driest times of the year. But this summer of 2021, it's rained a lot. That's making the humidity horrible. I don't know how to describe how much water is in the air. But most years, and maybe even some this year, you need to water your garden. So this video is about ways to more easily water your garden without bringing up the water bill as much. But first a quick note, even though it's horribly hot at the beginning of August, it often starts to cool off, sometimes having surprisingly cool days towards the end of August. It's too late for planting most crops. Rain barrels can provide a lot of free water, provided you don't live somewhere you get taxed for it. If you have gutters on your house and put rain barrels at the gutter ends, then just a little rain goes a long way as all the water on your roof is delivered to the barrels. I have no idea why somebody would pay 80 something dollars for a rain barrel when they are so easy to make. Just get about a 20 or 30 dollar plastic barrel or sometimes you can even get them for free and then you put a water faucet or a hose bib at the bottom of it. You can paint them to help them last longer in the sun but even most of the ones I didn't paint haven't worn out after years of use. I highly recommend putting a screen on top so you aren't breeding mosquitoes. The higher off the ground you have the rain barrel, the further and faster water can travel through the water hose. Since I don't mind redneck inventions, I just use an old washer or dryer to put the rain barrel on. You can also build something if you make it strong. All that water weighs a lot. Before drilling a hole in your barrel for the faucet, you can drill some practice holes in a scrap piece, like the lid, to determine what size to make the hole so the faucet will fit snugly. Usually they're either half inch or three quarter inch, and you might use plumber's tape. If you have kids or dogs or ducks that get a kiddie pool to play in, there's an easier way to get the dirty water from this pool to the plants other than hauling a bunch of buckets of water. My ducks need their water changed frequently. So I have something like a short rain barrel to help transport the water. This is a barrel cut in half with a faucet at the bottom. I put it on top of an intact barrel. The higher I can get it, the better it will drain. But I don't want it out of my reach. An intact barrel is just about the right height and easy to move around. I hook a water hose to the faucet and put the other end in my garden. Or maybe I put it in a large bucket near my potted plants so I can use it to water the plants later. Then I can just bucket out the water from the pool or stock tank or whatever I need to clean out and pour it in the barrel so the water can travel through the hose where it will do the most good. If you are changing out a duck's kiddie pool like I am, then I recommend putting a screen over the barrel and pour the water through the screen. This is so the screen can catch all the feathers and other gunk that might stop up the water hose. I also use a screen to save the tadpoles. Frogs and toads sometimes lay eggs in these pools. I don't know why the ducks don't eat them or if they do eat some of the tadpoles. However, I don't want to send its baby amphibians to a cruel death of dying out in my garden. So I catch them on the screen, put them in a bucket, and I can put them back in the pool when I put in fresh water. Just a quick note, I use the rain barrels to fill my duck's kitty pools. City water often has things that will hurt tadpoles. And if you happen upon one of these guys, please don't hurt it. it may look a little creepy, but this is a dragonfly nymph. It'll eat mosquito larvae in the water. And after it turns into a dragonfly, then it'll eat mosquitoes in the air. They often crawl around on the muddy bottoms of pools where you can't see them very well. There's one there if you can see it. So just keep in mind that these are some of the little guys you don't want to hurt when you're cleaning out the water. Dragonflies are wonderful mosquito eaters. If you have trouble getting the water to flow through the hose, you might use a siphon tool, or sometimes I just hold the water hose up near the barrel to get a siphon going. If you get a good siphon going, the water can and will travel up as long as it can go back down 
and the end of the hose doesn't get above the water level at the starting point. You might look up some tips on siphoning. When I water plants in pots, so often it seemed the water just goes right through the pot. To prevent that, I would have to stand there a while, pouring it slowly. Or this works pretty well. This is just a large water bottle with the bottom cut off and the top down in the dirt some. You can use a coke bottle or whatever. I have a stick in there to help keep it from falling over, but I don't always have to put in a stick. Depends on how deep I shove it in the dirt. I can fill this bottle with water while its head is in the dirt. And sometimes I'll put dirt in the cup. That way the water will have to slowly move through the dirt, or at least move a little more slower. If I put some dirt in the water bottle that has clay in it, it might take several days for the water to slowly filter through. Although the drier the dirt, the faster it filters through, which is what you want. While August isn't the best time to be starting seeds, here's a bonus tip about watering seeds for when you do start planting seeds. When you have tiny seeds all out in a row, it can be hard to water them without washing all the dirt off, maybe washing the seeds away, getting them scattered. So I have this old sheet that I put over all the freshly planted seeds. Then I just pour the water through the sheet. This causes the water to more evenly spread out and not wash up the dirt and seeds. I might leave the sheet on for several days to help hold in the moisture and because I'll want to water it for several days in a row to help get the seeds a good start. And so in case if there's a big storm, it won't just wash all the seeds away. I don't want to leave it on too long because it would block some growth. But I can usually leave it on for several days and the seeds can still sprout under it. Now, one final tip. Remember, even though it's probably hot and dry at the beginning of August, don't think it will last forever. Cooler days should be here by the end of the month. And next thing you know, you're wondering where all the heat went and wishing you had saved some.